So let's talk about your numbers. What is your goal for 2023? Your personal uh, My personal goal is to maintain 100 deals for the year. Uh, over the last couple of years, I've, I've gone over that goal, um, but I'm also trying to develop and grow my office as well. I don't, I don't have a team, I'm, I'm, but I have individual agents in my office. Okay, so for your franchise in Myrtle Beach, you're up to yeah. how many agents now? 18. 18 agents. That is, that is awesome. So Thanks. for your office, what's your office goal for the year? Last year, we did 400. Um, our goal would be 500 this year. I'm always trying to increase regardless of what the market, people are saying the market's doing. Okay, people saying what the market's doing. And regardless of whatever market we're in, right. there's closings happening every single day. Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, welcome to the Rockstar Agents Podcast. Your humble host here, David Allen Knight, real estate broker here in sunny Orlando, Florida. And today's special guest, we have Lance Stopper. Lance Stopper is with Century 21, Myrtle Beach, truly is a rock star. Say hello, Lance, to the 100,000 agents tuning in today, please. Hello. Hello. Thank you for having me. You're very welcome. You're very welcome. Lance Stopper, tell us a little bit about your journey. Um, I know we met personally uh, in 2016 at the Mike Ferry Superstar Retreat in Las Vegas. Why? Because we shared the same coach, Mr. Mark George. And since then, obviously, your numbers, your team numbers have just been going up and up and up because you are a rock star. Tell us a little bit about, about yourself and your business, please. The floor is yours, Senator. All right, absolutely. I uh, Right after I graduated college in 2006, I moved to Myrtle Beach to start selling real estate. And for about 10 years later, I have to admit, I ran around like a buyer agent, with like a chicken with my head cut off. And uh, <laughs> and fortunately, when I bought the, the Century 21 franchise, I met a, a broker in town who followed the Mike Ferry organization, the program. And I asked him how he had a lot of younger agents a year or two in doing 40, 50, 100 deals per year. Yeah. And he said, uh, we, we follow the Mike Ferry organization or the program rather. And um, so he introduced me to Mike and uh, I set up a call with him in March of that year, still didn't yes. sign up. And then later that year in December, I was going over all the agent and broker reports. And I was like, my God, all these younger agents are just blowing through with all these numbers. So I immediately called the Mike Ferry organization and said, I need a coach signed up. And then that's where... Mark George became my coach a week or two afterwards, and that's how we met. So that's awesome. So we shared the same coach back in the day. You're still mm -hmm. with MFO. I am with yes, Mike Perry. I use uh, Tom Myers from Indiana. Tom Mike Myers. Perry. Okay, great. I'm with Tom yeah. Anton. Got it. Okay. So, ladies and gentlemen, we're going to dive deep. Today's topic: How to be a rock star in today's market. And again, we're taping here. July 28, 2023. Lance, <clears throat> mm -hmm. describe in, in a few sentences today's market and the challenges that agents have in today's market. Let's dive deep. Go ahead. All right. Well, we, we still see a, a low amount of inventory in a lot of areas, certainly in Myrtle Beach, when it comes to homes, condos, townhomes, uh, even land in certain locations on the, on the water. And yep. so um, every day I prospect for three hours. Um, from about 8 to 11.30. And I'm hearing a lot of the same stories with the sellers that they don't want to move because they have a low interest rate compared to what the interest rates are right now. So that's one challenge that we're seeing. So when that happens, we're still seeing the low inventory uh, stay there as well. Um, I, I personally have reached out to a lot of absentee people, you know, people who own condos, second homes, so they don't have to go find another place right away. They can maybe wait to see if the rates go down a little bit or, or find that other place maybe down the road some but they can still um, benefit from the higher price market right now, you know, that we're seeing with low inventory. So I've always done that, Dave. I'm sure in Orlando, you see a lot of absentee second, second homeowners in there with the condos and townhomes as well. Okay. People aren't budging because they're in a property they're and they have a 2.75, a, a 3.0 uh, uh, interest rate. Mm -hmm. And, and obviously, you're you're still reaching out to those absentee owners in your marketplace. 
Uh, like Orlando, there are a lot of secondary homeowners in your marketplace, correct? There's a ton. Absolutely. Yeah. Plenty of business out there for sure. Okay. Got it. So let's talk about your numbers. What is your goal for 2023? Your personal. Uh, my personal goal is to maintain hundred deals for the year. Uh, over the last couple of years, I've, I've gone over that goal, um, but I'm also trying to develop and grow my office as well. I don't, I don't have a team. I'm, I'm, I sell, I have an assistant, but that's it. Um, but I have individual agents in my office. I'm looking to grow that office as well, or my office as well. Okay, so for your franchise in Myrtle Beach, you're up to yeah. how many agents now? 18. 18 agents. That is, that is awesome. So Thanks. for your office, what's your office goal for the year? Last year, we did 400. Um, our goal would be 500 this year. I'm always trying to increase regardless of what the market, people are saying the market's doing. Okay, people saying what the market's doing. And regardless of whatever market we're in, Right. There's closings happening every single day. Absolutely. Yep. And, and as Mike says, the, real estate is quite easy. The difficult part is just getting in between the deal. Exactly. Absolutely. Right? Yes. So, so your numbers are absolutely phenomenal. I mean, how, how many agents in America do 100 deals a year? That's a good question. I don't, I don't think there's too many. I think less than 1%. Yeah, I would agree. Yeah. You are a rock star, brother. <laughs> Thank you. Thanks. Um, so I know Mike. This. Go ahead. Oh, I was going to say Mike just sent an email out recently that NAR said that they're expecting a higher amount of sales per year at the finish of the year off than they did originally when they projected that. So, got some positive news. We got to see more of that instead of turning on all the other news stations. Exactly. So let's talk about mindset because most agents I hear they're hemming and hawing. They're they're down on their uh, they're down on their luck. Uh, people aren't selling. Uh, interest rates are too high, blah, 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 blah. Like, yeah. really? Like, you are what you think you become of what you put in your brain, right? 100%, 100% yes. Watching the right stuff, reading the right stuff, hanging out with the right people. If you sit next to a winner and then next to a loser, it's a, I don't mean that in a bad way, but there's a yes, totally different do. conversation, okay. right? <laughs> a positive or a negative person, right? Totally different conversation. In fact, the reason why I didn't go to the Superstar Retreat this year uh, my wife and I went to London to the uh, Tony Robbins Unleash the Power Within, which was phenomenal. Wasn't it? So Absolutely. So that's my another wife and way I did the same the thing with some other uh, rock star agents recently here in Fort Lauderdale. Awesome oh, time. Give us was, the yeah. highlight of that, please. Eliminating your limiting beliefs. The, the, the bullshit, basically, that you tell yourself every day. And we get in those groups a little bit if you have a bad day or two with maybe going on listing appointments, not getting the listings or a deal falls through or, or whatever. And it's learning to get out of those and keep moving forward. Yes. Yeah. And he turns down the lights. Yeah, it's crazy. It's yeah. black. Yeah. And you just hear his voice and every, yeah, it's nuts. And, you, and he tells you to bring out the inner, quote unquote, demons inside of yourself and hair is starting to stand up on the back of my bald head. Okay. <laughs> Me too. Dave, that was an experience. I didn't Wasn't know it was coming. It, it was like, that was, I thought yeah. I was in church. <laughs> People yeah. were speaking in tongues. Yeah. Okay. The, 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 yeah. the spirit was there. It was absolutely, people were crying out. People were, were just getting the, like the old shit that's been inside of them out. Yeah. There's one Amazing. in Dallas in November. I'm trying to get my agents to go in November in Dallas. So awesome. that'd be a good one. Yeah. Mindset. Let's let's let go of negative people. Let's let go of negative thoughts. Regardless, there are people out there that need our service. Bottom mm -hmm. line. So agents are hung up about the low record low inventory. I get it. So what do we need to do in today's marketplace to succeed? Let's talk about just getting 25 deals a year. OK, mm -hmm. for the average agent out there, which is, by the way, the average agent does four deals a year. Right. Okay? Right. Yeah. So what do we need to do on a daily basis that allow us to find that that buyer or seller that truly wants to um, uh, conduct a sale, either selling or buying in today's market? Well, like we just were talking about, you got to get out of your head with negative thoughts. <clears throat> because mm -hmm. there's deals happening everywhere. You look at all the top agents, they consistently produce those deals year after year, depending on where the market's at. 
Mm -hmm. um, hitting the phones and prospecting every day. You have to talk to people. When, when I have new agents, brand new agents joining my office, we sit down and go over their goals, but we more yes. importantly go over a, a plan of action of what to do. You have to talk to people. You have to be in front of them, whether it's an open house, call your center of influence database from another job that you came from, and then reaching out to neighborhoods um, and prospecting every day. There's a certain amount of people you have to talk to per day. And there's multiple Correct. ways of doing that. So that would be a good start. In this day and age right now in the market that I'm seeing, I'm noticing that I have to make more contacts to do that. But I'm just mm -hmm. increasing them, you know, for I would average about 30, 35. I'm now in the 40s or trying to get to the 40s every day because I know that I have to talk to more people to, to get the listings and the appointments. I agree. And yesterday's email from Mike Ferry, number one, is always, always prospect. Always prospect. Yeah, get on the phones, 7.45 a.m. And by the way, you can do that at Talking to Prospects, the Facebook page that I have, the group that I have. We'll talk. Well, the link will be below. Okay. Always build your pipeline 24-7. Okay. Yes. Number one. Next, to succeed in today's marketplace with record low inventory. Next point, please. Well, once you have a lead, you have to know what to say. Mm. So script, scripts, role-playing, pre-qualifying. Uh, practicing the listing appointments. We role play every morning with my agents. It's so important because then when they ask you something or they give you an objection, bam, you're going to know it. And you're going to know it with confidence and conviction. You're going to get that listing. Right. Right. Pre Market stats would be another one. Pre-qualify. Yep. Absolutely. 100% yeah. of the time. Absolutely. 100%. Follow the script pervatum. Yep. Absolutely. Even if and it's your mother. <laughs> you got to pre-qualify her, especially. I have two brothers that sell real estate. I got to make sure she's going with me. <laughs> so, um, Ma, as your favorite son, when I come over to see you tomorrow at four, and if what I say makes sense, and as long as you feel, Ma, as long as you feel 100% confident and comfortable that I, your favorite son can do the job, right. will you be hiring me for the job of selling your home? Absolutely. Absolutely. Question number well, one. It, so pre-qualify. Absolutely. Yeah. And even when you're on the scripts, digging deeper with the questions. So my first year of prospecting in 2017, I remember several times, Mark, our old coach would get us on and say, okay, Lance, how many leads do you have for my lead follow-up? And I'd say, ah, 22. He goes, so you're telling me that you have 22 people ready to list property. And we would go through and there was, what we realized was I didn't ask enough questions when I had them on the phone the first time. So when I was actually following up with them, Yes, I did not. I, I they weren't. They might not even wanted to sell. I didn't dig deep enough the first time on the phone to know whether or not they're worth a follow up. If I couldn't set the appointment up at that point. So you have to dig deeper and you have to treat every call like it's your very last call when you're talking to these sellers and go as far as you can to get as much out of them. And it's more importantly, their motivation, because when I follow back up, I'm going to ask you, Dave, you told me you're moving up to South Carolina. Right. Correct. Your yeah, kids are up there now and they're, and they're having kids. So what's stopping you then from putting your home on the market? So I got to have your, your, your motivation and then pull up the heartstrings a little bit to then set the appointment. If I don't have your mm -hmm. motivation, I have no idea why you're selling, then, you know, I, I won't, it'd be very difficult to get the listing and listing appointment. Or you right. might not be qualified enough to qualified even to list your property. Right. So in today's market, we have the greedy mm -hmm. and the needy. Yeah. Okay. So I feel many agents are just listing people's property because the the seller is greedy and yeah. by listing mm -hmm. a greedy owner's property what's the likelihood of that property selling in today's market zero zero ladies and gentlemen it's going to be an expired listing in three to six months and you've done all that work and spent all that money for what in time time for is so bubble. valuable in time most yeah, valuable absolutely. asset commodity that we have is our energy and our time, correct? So yeah. let's talk about, okay, pre-qualifying the needy versus the greedy. So <clears throat> what are the red flags for greedy? Tell the people, please. Well, they don't have to sell. Um, they just want to see if they can get, you know, some, if they can, if they can sell at the top of where they're selling at right now. Um, you know, Lance, we're not in any rush. When I hear that stuff, I'm like, oh my goodness, you know? We're and then when I go rush, we don't need to sell. Yeah, definitely. And, and okay. back, or if they don't give me any motivation. Well, you know, we're, we just want to see what we can get. You know, oh, yeah. well, I hear, I hear that sometimes. Yeah. Okay. So when I'm, when I'm sitting down with them and going over the market analysis and say the home, I think should be listed for 700, but they want 750 and they won't budge. 
we write it on the last page that in two weeks we reduce it seven percent and then after the next two weeks we reduce it seven percent or i'm not taking it. that's too much time you know but again that's where it comes out if they're even even you know motivated to sell and a lot of times after you go through the pre-qual you might just cancel the appointment all together and save yourself some time i was going to say that why even go on the listing appointment if they are not ready to a move somewhere or mm -hmm. sell the asset to do something else with the proceeds or the capital gains of that asset, correct? Yes, those few hours of prepping and appointment time, you can get back on the phone and find someone that's qualified and needed, that needs to sell. So question number three on the pre-qual list, tell me again, where are you moving to? We're moving to, I'm coming to Florida and Orlando with, with Dave. Yeah. So when you hear, again, we're going over red flags, needy versus greedy, okay? Yeah. The needy is what you just said. I'm moving because I because in, in this amount of time, okay? The mm -hmm. greedy will say, well, we got that covered. Oh, we yeah. have a place to go. Right. right? Oh, nowhere yeah. special. Yeah, exactly. Folks, they're not opening up. Yeah. They're not opening up. So you have to what? You have to press. Mm -hmm. Well, if you, you were to press. sell, are you looking to upgrade, you know, downgrade, meaning upsize or downsize? Tell me more. Right. Are you looking to live in the same area or or leave the state or or, or leave the area? Mm -hmm. Definitely. And then you can time crunch them, too. You know, Dave, if I get this home sold the next 30 to 45 days, would that be too soon? You know, and that kind of throws up some red flags that might pop up, too, down the road. Is, well, I got this to happen and do this and, and whatever. So um, I, I totally agree. You have to keep pressing. And a lot of times you can do that over the phone like we're talking about pre-qualifying. So you can save yourself a trip, save yourself a time and then get back on the phone to find something that's worth it. Correct. Yep. So how soon do you have to be there? Well, great question. Yep. We're looking to do this. Well, I love hearing now. Yeah. Yesterday. <laughs> Yesterday. I wanted to yeah. sell three months ago, but the last guy just didn't do the job. The last guy listed it, mm -hmm. I believe, at a too high price or we haven't heard from our agent in a month. Mm -hmm. You absolutely. hear that a lot, don't you? You do. Yes, Absolutely. So yep. how soon do you have to be there is so critical, okay, in defining needy versus greedy. The greedy will say, eh, well, if it sells, it sells. Mm -hmm. Right. Uh, you know, it's just an investment property. I have a tenant there. Yeah, exactly. And, and I see that those... a lot of times with absentee people. You know, they don't, they've had it for a while. They don't have to. So we got to make sure we find the right ones. Okay. So yep. in today's marketplace, ladies and gentlemen, we're talking about how to be a rock star agent, how to get those listings, and more importantly, how to yeah, get can those I say one thing real quick? Right. And don't be afraid to be a little confrontational. I mean, you're oh, trying to qualify yes, push the buttons. And I, want, I want people to know that because don't it's your time. And, and we're interviewing them to make sure that they are worth our, uh, our time, spending time so that we can get their home sold. I'm not putting it on the market just to say I got an extra listing. That is a complete waste of time. So press, long, press more and make sure that they're qualified and they're ready to sell. Okay, so let's go over a few scenarios. How do you press? What should an agent say? So, boy, there's so many things that might pop up. Even sometimes I get the, well, um, I got to talk to my husband first. Okay, no problem. So if your husband's 100% on board, are you on board now to put your property on the market? And then more things then pop out. Like, well, Lance, yeah, I don't know if I really would be ready to. I mean, I've got, my kids love it. We still have a couple more years that they're still in school and they want to come down. So I kind of know that was more of a smokescreen thing than anything. Um, you know, before I even set the appointment, but um, I would talk more. I, well, here's pressing. Go to their motivation, Dave. If they're not giving yes. you their motivation, right? So if, if they need to sell, I, why do you want to sell? Just to sell to make money. Okay, what what would selling this home and taking five hundred thousand dollars and putting it in your bank account? What would that do for you? You know, or what would that allow you to do? You know, I'm trying to pull out. If someone's not gonna give you that stuff, it's kind of like a doctor. They got to know everything so they can prescribe the right thing for you. I got to know exactly what you're trying to do so I can get you there as fast as I can for the most amount of money. Without asking questions, okay, you're just talking. And when you're yeah. telling, it's not selling, right? right? You have mm -hmm. to ask those pressing questions to get them to talk because when they open up, that mm -hmm. allows you to obviously, yes, I'm listening, okay? And okay, I'm going to reaffirm what you just said. And then mm -hmm. we're going to do what? We're then going to close for the appointment, correct? Right. That's okay. right. So uh, we're going, uh, we're, today we're discussing needy versus greedy. The greedy in today's market sold a year and a half ago. 
the needy in today's market mm -hmm. sells in 30 days. Mm -hmm. That's Correct? Right. Okay, mm -hmm. got it. Next part is when I see you, how much did you want to list the home for? Very important yeah. question. Right. This way, that's that's very motivating too, because if they want to you know, list it for 800 grand and the comps say 700, are they realistic or are they in fantasy land? Lance, talk. Fantasy land, absolutely. That's a great question. And that eliminates a lot of my appointments from right there. You know, they always say as Mike Terry organizations, your trash can is your next best friend. You just toss your leads in there after you go through this pre qual Yeah. Ladies <laughs> and gentlemen, I've got it. It's recycling day. Look at all these. Yeah. Okay. Here, here we go. I followed yeah. up with a lot of people today and got three yeah. great, uh, three great leads. And I mm -hmm. threw away a lot of trash because they yeah. simply weren't motivated. Next question is, you know, as a professional real estate agent, I study homes and prices every day. So Lance, I, I'd assume that you would list the home with me at a price that would cause it to sell. Correct? Yeah. Now, why is that such an important question? Because they might even ask you where your price is or what you think it's worth at that point. And that's where it comes up with the market analysis, which they've had or received in your market packet. Mm -hmm. And then this is, you know, and then you ask what price you won't go below. Right. So if they say, well, 1 800, we won't go below 780. Well, they're at 700. It's not going to happen. So just save yourself a trip. Tell them thanks for the time. And more importantly, if they are motivated, they're, they're going to give you a ballpark figure that is close to market value. Mm -hmm. Well, and and people have to understand, Dave, the, the best time for a home to sell is the first week or two. It gets so much activity. Yes. And some of your best offers come in the beginning. So don't let someone say, well, let's start at 800. We'll work our way down. It makes the home look terrible online, mm -hmm. you know, and, and marketing wise. So, you know, go at a number that your realtor suggests and, and get it sold. Correct. Absolutely. Yeah. So when you ask that at what price, you know, so when you, you, you when I ask that, you know, that question, I study homes and prices every day. So therefore, I assume that you would list the home with me, though, at a price that would cause your home to sell, dot, dot, dot. Correct. Yes. So tell me, Lance, what price won't you go below? Why is that question so important? We got to know if they're serious or not. If they're willing to list and, and sell at a, a price that the rest of the homes are selling it or they're in fantasy selling, like you mentioned earlier. Correct. You know what I love about that line, that question? It gives us an automatic price reduction. Mm hmm. I yeah. love that. I think that line is that yeah. question is so friggin' genius. Mm -hmm. Because when right. you do go for a price reduction in two to three weeks, Lance, you did tell me that you know you would reduce the price down mm -hmm. to you know X amount of dollars. Right. We did agree upon that, correct? That's right. Yes. Mm -hmm. And the and the market is showing, you know, we've only had one showing in three weeks, zero offers. What do you think? The market is telling us, Land Stopper. We need to reduce. We That's need a way to, to ask questions, price. Dave. Yeah, right. You got to ask in question format. Yeah. And I always tell them too at the listing appointment, there's four different scenarios that the market's going to tell us when we hit the market. The first one is if we're underpriced, we'll get a ton of showings and maybe a few offers. Then it's my job to get multiple offers and get that price up to fair market value. Mm -hmm. the, sec the second scenario would be your normal 30 to 60 days, have a couple of showings, go under contract and close within your 30, 60, 90 days. Uh, third market scenario would be we're getting a ton of showings and no offers. We tend to be about five, maybe even 7% off of where we need to be mm -hmm. price-wise. And then if the fourth scenario is if we hit the market and almost hear crickets, you know, one showing every week or two weeks, and it's really nothing, then we're more 10% off. So when I go over those four scenarios with them in person, then I'm calling them back in two weeks and say, Dave, do you remember the four scenarios we talked about? And do you yes, remember now we... we We've had a ton of showings, but no offers, haven't we? No offers. Right, right. So what scenario then would that fall in? And then they say, well, Lance, that's that 5% you talked about. Right. So you're ready to make a, a smart move and get it reduced and get it sold, you know, and go right into the, the, the price reduction script. And so they're already understand the market before we even hit the market of what's going to happen, the four scenarios. And that helps a lot with price reduction down the road. You're exactly correct, Landstopper. And again, my name is David Knight. Welcome to Rockstar Agents here on YouTube and other platforms. I am your humble host, 
realtor here in Orlando, Florida. We have a superstar. His name is Lance Stopper. He's with Century 21, located in Myrtle Beach. Today, we're diving deep to how to succeed in today's marketplace with limited inventory, higher higher interest rates. And by the way, yes, the 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 uh, base mark went up again yesterday by I believe mm -hmm. by 25 uh, uh, percentage Facebook points. points. A mm -hmm. 0.25 percentage points. And again, we're talking about the importance of pre-qualifying the needy versus the greedy. And again, a year and a half ago, we could take those greedy listings all day long. Today's marketplace, not so much, huh? Right. That's right. And Dave, can I share? Um, Please. I, wanted, I wanted to bring one of my things up too. I know there's some agents out there that have a few listings that might not be selling now. And I share this with my sellers too. Um, I'm sure you're familiar with the listing report card. Um, I remember Mark used to get us to do this all the time when we had some inventory. And so the listing report card, what you do is you take all your listings and there's five different topics that we rate from one to 10 okay. on each listing. Okay. Mm -hmm. Number one, number one would be your price from one to 10, 10 being great, price great to one being terrible. Where does your property lie? One to 10 there. And then number two would be location one to 10, does it back up to nice water, a pond, a lake, or is it backing up to a noisy highway, et cetera? Rank, rank that from one to 10. Uh, number three would be your seller motivation. This is what we're talking about, needy or greedy right now. Are they needy or are they greedy? Rate that from one to 10. Um, the condition of the property from one to 10. And then your accessibility, is there a renter in there? Are we having a bunch of requests but we can't get in there? We gotta rate that from one to 10. So your lowest one or two is what we have to focus on. Now, mm -hmm. some of them, some of them are easier to focus on than others, right? So yes. what if it was in a bad location? Well, we can't lift the home up and move it. No. So, what, so what's the next thing we could have to do? We have to lower price until someone's willing to accept that property where it's at, at the price we set it for. Correct. So it's, I like to go over this with my sellers too, to, to about, so they understand how we evaluate property, especially after we're on the market for a few weeks. So they know what we look at to make adjustments to get it sold. Correct. I just, I just wanted to share that with you too, because I know we were talking about scenarios and all the price that, that is awesome and uh believe it or not mark never shared that with me could you share that could you share that with me in a pdf and we'll i will we'll put it in the remarks below yeah i sure will yep that's yeah. awesome <laughs> thank you not throwing mm -hmm. mark underneath the bus or anything like that but you're yeah. absolutely right and i do go over that in one way or another for instance i do have a, a listing right now i did get a price reduction uh two weeks ago of 25 grand it, it, it is in daytona beach a block from the beach and for those who do know daytona beach mm, it's not the greatest beach in america ladies and gentlemen and across the street is an adult um board house okay so mm -hmm. you know the types of people that'll be living across the street and i do bring that and i have brought that up okay mm -hmm. and as far mm -hmm. as its location although it's a block from the beach it's across the street from people that just got out of jail okay mm -hmm. so with that being said you've got to rate that obviously uh, the homeowner, if truly motivated, understands those ramifications or specifications and will adjust if you just educate them. And then also you need to address their motivation. OK, mm -hmm. so, Mr. Home Seller, when we did uh, uh, sign this listing agreement, uh, we specifically talked about what you were going to do with the capital gains, the proceeds of the sale. You wanted to do a 1031 exchange so you can buy a bigger and better asset. Is that correct? That's still true, right? Right. Yes. OK, well, in mm -hmm. order for us to uh, get this property sold, we need to adjust the price due to this, this and that. Do you feel the same? Great. Now I'm going to be based upon that. I'm going to recommend a price reduction of, will you allow me to reduce the price of this property to help me help you get this property sold? Pause. Yes. Okay. Well, will, will you agree with me to reduce it by this amount? Yes. Perfect. Then we get it in writing. So therefore, mm -hmm. There is no questions asked. Well, I didn't tell you to do that or what have you. Mm -hmm. Are we on the same page, Lance? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. It's going back to their motivation on why they're selling in the beginning, going back over the feedback. under, and Even like I said, going over the listing report card or anything else that we can show them of the reasons why. Like your location problem on the one, eventually that will sell, but it will have to be at a price that someone's willing to accept the location. Correct. 
Correct. So again, I'm with Lam Stopper. He is a rock star agent projected to sell a hundred plus properties again this year. Okay. And also has a team of 18 at his, uh, at his, uh, his office in Myrtle beach. They're projected to sell about 500 homes this year. And I've got to ask you with all the homes that you sell personally, how the hell are you doing that? And then managing all those people at the same time. <laughs> Talk to me. It's boy, it it's challenging. That's why I'm I'm staying at a hundred and just trying to put better systems in place with staff um, to help handle a lot of that stuff. So it does take some patience and some time. Got it. But but I'll tell you one thing though, Dave. Let me tell you one thing. This is the importance of listing versus buyer agents. I would never be able to be a buyer agent and do all that. You know, representing sellers allows me to do so much more, so much productivity, make so much more money than it would be if I ran around buyers all day. You're absolutely right. And Mike says, when you're the seller's agent, you are the employer in town. And when you're the buyer's agent, you're the employee. 100%, yes. Yep. I love being the employer in town. Me too. <laughs> <laughs> it just yeah. makes life more comfortable. It makes life more profitable absolutely you can have your weekends off and everyone's working for you boom isn't that beautiful yeah. sure is yep we appreciate you let's let's end this with a few more uh, a few more advice for agents that are uh, uh listening in today especially agents give us some words of advice i would Newer agents too, I would um, find a company, a coach that um, supports prospecting. Um, I think, I wish I learned that in the very beginning. It took me 10 years, but maybe that's the reason why I love it so much because I've gone through being a buyer agent for 10 years. So um, find a, a good company that, that supports the Mike Ferry organization and, and prospecting. Um, practice your scripts. You have to internalize them so that when you talk to someone, you're not worried about what to say next. You can actually listen. And then you can you can go through and ask him more questions. Um, and then my next thing was questions. You have to dive so much deeper with questions to make sure that they're worth their, your time. You know, I've always looked at either I'm uh, going to get hung up on the phone by asking too many questions. Um, I'm going to set the appointment or uh, I'm going to realize they're not qualified, that I've asked enough questions that these people are not qualified, and aren't really motivated to sell their property. I'm just going to throw that lead away and then go to the next one. So. Um, but but first, I think it would be finding an environment that supports this, that helps you with that. You can role play, um, try coaching. I love it. I've been in coaching for seven years and love it. That's awesome. And one of the ways that uh, newer agents can um, develop those skills is they can tune in every morning starting at 745 to talking to prospects. OK, the link is below. And that's where agents of all levels get together on a Zoom Obviously, you have your dialer, you're calling certain mm -hmm. lists, et cetera, et cetera. And you can listen in to professionals such as Lance and professionals such as myself and truly learn how to talk to prospects. So um, I think that's so important, Dave. Let me say one thing, though. To listen sure. to people that have been in for longer and how they ask questions and they might ask questions a little bit, dig a little bit deeper. When you're mm -hmm. around that, you start doing it, too. And then you get the excitement of people setting an appointment and everything, too. So I think it's really important. That's a great idea. Appreciate it. Again, my name is David Allen Knight, realtor here in Orlando, Florida. I am your humble host here at the Rockstar Agents Podcast. Lance Stopper, Myrtle Beach, you are a rock star, 100 plus deals a year. Plus, you have a beautiful wife. We can't discount <laughs> that. Two beautiful right. children. We Thank appreciate you. you, brother. How do people get in touch with you if they want to do a deal? They want to refer to you in your market, Myrtle Beach. How do they get in touch with you? Uh, um, real simple. If they want to email me, it's lancestopper at gmail.com. No spaces, just lancestopper at gmail.com would probably be the best way. How about, can they find you on Instagram, uh, Facebook? Facebook, uh, Lance Stopper, Century 21 Stopper. Uh, Instagram is Lance Stopper Real Estate. I'm, I'm starting to get into more social media. Um, so um, my, some of my agents have like half a million followers. They're like, man, you got to get into it. So um, I'm, I'm working on that. But uh, Lance Stopper at Gmail or face, Facebook, Lance Stopper, and you'll find me. That's awesome. So ladies and gentlemen, please comment below. And if you see value in what we do here, please like, share, and subscribe. And until our next podcast, we wish everybody success. 
Well, get on the phones and talk to prospects, ladies and gentlemen. They're not picking up the phone and calling you. You need to reach out to them every day. Do it for the rest of your career. This way, you can provide for your family, and more importantly, have a profitable real estate business. So with all that being said, thank you, Lance. You are a rock star. Appreciate you, brother. Thank you, Dave. You got it. Thank you. Take care, people. That's it, bro. All right, man. Cool. Oh, hey, man, I appreciate you oh. so much, man. By the way, I'm yeah. closing on a beach house Monday. You, the wife, and your kids are invited anytime. I know we've talked about cool. going boating and this and that. Yeah. Uh, buying the property in New Smyrna Beach, bro. Awesome, man. All right. Cool. Thank you. I appreciate it, man. I hope I brought some stuff for you, some nuggets. No, you did, so. man. You want to say hello? Say hello. How you doing, man? Hey. Good. How are you, man? I'm good. I'm good. That was a great good. interview. Just to oh, well, thanks. Thanks. I, I, don't know. I hope, hope I could give some stuff to people. So, so we're, gonna be sharing, we're going to be sharing shorts with you. We're going to be sharing uh, the, the full and mids with you as well. Okay. okay. Let's share this. Let's keep growing this. And of course, brother, I appreciate you. Obviously, you know, you are my guy. You got it, man. Thanks a lot, Dave. It's good seeing you. Peace out, man. Good seeing you hey, again, buddy. bro. Take care. Bye. Bye-bye.